Hey everybody, welcome back. Huge update from Hackchi 3.8 today from Team Shinkansen. If you are new to Hackchi, it is a program you can use on the NES, SNES, and Genesis minis to add more games and other features. As always with using these type of programs, there is a small amount of risk, but there have been zero cases of this program completely breaking anybody's system. The developers have always found a way to get you back up and running in case of any issues. Got lots of new features to cover, so let's get started. If you're using a previous version of HackGCE, you should get this pop-up letting you know that version 3.8 is available. Going through the new features, we have more controller mappings. You can now drag and drop artwork to set an image. You have automatic stable HackG HMOD update downloads, game metadata, and an art scraper. Big update there. Anytime you're importing the Q, GDI, or M3U files, the hash and all related files will be imported with it. Got a new window design. New option to add or remove prefixes from game titles. Got a couple new Bluetooth features here. Support for DualShock 3 and DualShock 4 with automatic pairing over USB. Just plug in the controllers and it was paired automatically. The new Bluetooth module Blue Z has been updated to 5.54. For the Sega Genesis Mini, they added the racing slash sports, fighting, and action slash shooting genres. We got preliminary theme support. They improved game compatibility with the internal emulator. The Wes's 1981 artwork has been updated, as well as the stock Sega game information. And we have a new Arabic translation thanks to Alucard. A few bug fixes here. They fixed the image max width in mod readmes. Show select cover dialog if multiple files match in the art folder. They fixed the Bluetooth menu not updating when a device trust status changes. That's a big one. They fixed the incorrect icon path in desktop file for Sega game exports. And for the Sega Genesis Mini, the user interface now shows the correct player count, genre, and description. Just hit the update button at the bottom. It will download automatically and it'll install automatically. Right away, you can see the menu went through a pretty big change. It's a lot bigger now, and you can make it full screen. The game info and artwork are not on separate tabs anymore, and they're all on the main menu. One of the big changes here is this new description box for the Genesis games that is automatically filled in for you, so you don't have to manually enter any information. The steps to install Hackchi onto your system are actually the same for all three systems. You have to put your system into what's called FEL mode. To do that, you connect your system to your PC with the micro USB cable and then power on while holding down the reset button. The cable that came with the Sega Genesis Mini will not work for this, so you will need something else. If you have an NES or SNES Classic, the cable that came with that system will work fine. Most Samsung charger cables will work as well. And if those aren't an optional, I'll have a link in my description where you can order one from Amazon. So to get Hatchy installed, you go to the Kernel tab and then Install Repair. It'll ask if you want to flash the custom kernel, click Yes and the next pop-up will say it's waiting for your mini system. The timing for the Genesis Mini is a little bit different, so these instructions are specifically for that system. But for the NES and SNES Classic, just holding down the reset button while powering on should be fine. We're doing our demonstration with the Sega Genesis Mini today. So we're gonna hold reset, power on our system. As soon as I hear that chime stop, I let go of the reset button. Once it's complete, you should get this pop-up saying that you can upload games to your mini now. One of the more common problems that people have with using Hackchi is the notification saying that the system is taking too long to reboot. Some helpful tips to prevent that is to disable your firewall, virus protection, and VPN if you have one prior to installing the custom kernel. After it's installed, you can enable all those again. If you're still having problems after that, you can go to the help tab right here important message, and there's two links here for troubleshooting assistance, the Rock and the Classics Discord or the Rock and the Classics subreddit. A good indication that everything installed correctly is this green light in the bottom corner. That means that your system is connected to your PC. When using this with the Sega Genesis Mini, you're gonna get a lot of games that you don't recognize. That's because all three regions of games are on the main list here. And you'll even find a couple new games that were actually included on the Sega Genesis Mini that weren't unlocked for use. But using Hackchi, those games are available. The SNES Classic and NES Classic did not include any hidden games. Here's a couple games we're gonna to add to the Sega Genesis Mini, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Hyperstone Heist, and Samurai Showdown. All you have to do is take your game file, drag it right into the games list. And with the new 3.8 update, all the information is included automatically to include box art. Let's try Hyperstone Heist. 
And again, everything is included for us. You'll still have to create your own spine because that is not included with the scraper. But it's still a very simple process. You just select which spine you want, which icon you want, and hit OK. The process works the same way with the SNES and NES side as well. Another method of adding games is to click the Add More Games button down here in the bottom, and then navigating to the folder where you keep your games. You can highlight multiple games at once, and click Open, and they'll all be added. With 3.8, you can now add prefixes to allow you to organize your games how you like. Just right-click your game, click Add Prefix, enter the prefix you want, then hit OK. And then your prefix is added to the beginning of the game name. So adding the games that are associated with the system is easy enough. And it'll use the native emulator for each system. M2 Engage for Genesis, Catchy Catchy for NES, and Canoe for Super Nintendo. But along with adding games native to those systems, you can add games from other systems to be played. To do this, you need a program called RetroArch. You can find everything you need in the Modules tab in the KMFD Mod Hub. KMFD Manic has created an amazing course that he's been working on for over three years now, and he's always taking the time to sit down and help anybody who needs it. So to play games from other systems, the first thing you want to go to is the KMFD RetroArc tab. You're going to select your version of RetroArc. The only difference is the theme you. So you have the Ozone theme down here, RGUI, and XMB. Once you've selected your theme, just hit the Download Module button. Next, you want to select a core depending on what type of game you want to play. So go to the KMFD Cores tab. On the left slider over here is a list of all the systems that are available to use with Hackchi, and there are a lot. For example, if I wanted to play Nintendo games on my Sega Genesis Mini, I would select one of the NES cores. I recommend FCUMM or NES Topia. And by highlighting multiple cores, you can download more than one. Just like with RetroArch, you're going to hit the Download Module button. After you've downloaded your cores, you want to go back to your Modules tab and install extra modules. Then it's as simple as putting a check mark next to the cores and RetroArch you want to install and hitting the OK button at the bottom. You'll get a done notification when they've finished installing. If you go back to your Modules tab and the Install Extra Modules button, you'll see those modules are now grayed out, meaning they are installed to your system. Now when we add our NES game to the Genesis Mini, you may have to change the command line. So right now the command line states that this game is supposed to run with Catchy Catchy. Well, that's not on the Sega Genesis Mini. That's why we installed FCEUMM. To change this, go to your game and right click, select Emulation Core. Highlight your game on the next screen. Make sure that Nintendo is highlighted as the console and FCEUMM is the core highlighted. Click Apply and then Close. And now our command line has been changed. Once you've got everything set up, you've added your games, you've downloaded and installed your cores, now you have to transfer the games from your PC to your system. There's two ways of doing this. You can use the Synchronize Selected Games with Mini button down here. This will directly move the games from your system onto the system storage. Now each system has a different amount of storage available to you. Depending on the type of games you want to add, it can run out very quickly. To combat that, you can use a USB flash drive or a micro USD card and reader. If you choose to use external storage, you would instead hit the Export to USB button. Select the drive you're going to export to, then hit OK. On the NES and SNES Classic, you can only have about 40 games on the main menu before you can possibly have issues. With the Sega Genesis Mini, it's about 150 games. So to add folders to your system, you want to use this Structure button right here. You have some buttons that will structure everything automatically over here. If you want to change the folder art, just click on the icon over here, and you have multiple selections you can choose from. Something nice about Hackchi is that you don't have to flash the custom firmware every time you want to add new games. As long as you have this green button in the corner, you're good to add your games and just sync. I'm going to sync these games directly to my system, so I'm going to hit the synchronize button here, and we're all done. Now that everything's completed, let's head over to the Sega Genesis Mini. Alright, so we need to go down to the bottom of the screen to get to our new games, and here's the folder that we added for more games. Going into that folder, we have our games separated by system, so we have our NES games and our Genesis games that we added. Let's check out our Nintendo folder, and there is 8 eyes. Let's go into our Genesis folder, and here are all our Genesis games that we added. Let's start up Samurai Showdown. Looks like the game loaded up fine. Game looks and sounds great, and it's running fine with Hack GCE. Let's go 
go back to that Nintendo game that we added, Eight Eyes. Let's start that up real quick. And this is running perfectly as well. Now remember, at least for the Sega Genesis Mini, you're limited to the buttons that the controller has. So you'll want to use a different controller for other systems that have more than two action buttons. But just like the Genesis games, 8 Eyes is running perfectly. And because this game is running through RetroArch, you have a few more options available to you. If you're playing on the SNES or NES Classic, hitting Start and Select together will take you to the RetroArch menu, but you don't have a Select button with the Genesis Mini. For the first time going into the RetroArch menu, you want to hit the Reset button on the system. To set a shortcut, go to the Settings menu, down to Input. Scroll down until you come to Hotkey Binds, down to the Menu Toggle Gamepad Combo. I usually pick the option for holding start for two seconds. You can hit the B button to back out of the menu. Now holding the start button on the Sega Genesis controller takes us into that menu. So when you want to quit out of the game, hold down the start button, hit B to back out of the quick menu, then go to the bottom of the screen to quit RetroArch. And you're brought back to the Sega Genesis mini menu. On the NES and SNES Classic, you can hold down and select on the controller to take you back to the menu as well. That's it, tons of new features with the new 3.8 update. Huge thank you to Team Shinkansen and everybody involved for continuing to support these awesome mini systems. Just a reminder, if you need any assistance with this, you can check out the Rockin' the Classics Discord and subreddits. That's all I got for you guys today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Eric Cologne, Jordy Alex, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Dor. Yaroslav Orudzov, Den Cardoso, Andre G, Randy Day, Travis Morton, Rick67, Craig Livesley, Jason Hallbrooks, Red, John Westby, and Batman.